So the first two topics on your paper in June will be population and the second one will be resources. Uh, they're both very much interlinked so we'll look at them both at the same time now. Uh, population. Uh, the, the population of the world is growing. It's growing very quickly. There are well over 6 billion people on the planet now. Uh, fast approaching 7 billion. By the year 2100 we're looking at over 10 billion. Uh, key things to remember, birth rate, death rate, and natural increase. Birth rate, babies born per thousand, death rate, deaths per thousand of the population. We say per thousand of the population so we can easily compare countries. Natural increase is a simple sum. It's the birth rate minus the death rate. Um, so uh, it's, it's basically about how countries, how population grows uh, just by births and deaths. Natural increase, don't be fooled, just because it uses the word increase, natural increase can be a negative number as well. It can also be a way of describing uh, how a population uh, falls. Uh, LEDCs have high population growth and MEDCs generally have low population growth. Uh, an example of population change in Japan, for instance, on average the oldest population in the world. This means things like higher pension costs, higher taxes, higher, uh, more money spent on medical care and nursing and what have you. And overall, the population is decreasing because the average age of uh, Japanese is quite old. They're not having any more kids. There's less births. Uh, women focus on their career, uh, so they have babies a lot later in life, as is the same here in Britain and most other LEDCs. Uh, sorry, MEDCs. Um, and basically people are living longer, for instance, because of things like better health care. Mexico, on the other hand, uh, is the opposite. Very low population, very youthful population, uh, which means there's a lack of jobs uh, and there's increased numbers of people in school. The population is increasing quite quickly. There's a very low death rate. So we've got two examples there of countries with their different changes in population. Uh, how do you control um, populations? One way is through government policies, the China one-child policy that we looked at in year nine and we've looked at a number of times. You should be able to reel off the basics of the one-child policy. But there are also other ways as well that you can control population by controlling the amount of people that come into your country. Uh, 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 migration controls. The USA does this on its Mexican border. Lots of Mexicans want to go to America for the, the better opportunities, jobs, homes, schools, medical care, things like that. Um, but America needs to control the amount of people uh, that come over, otherwise it will just get out of control. They do admit some refugees, they do admit some people with specific skills, but many, many Mexicans try to cross the border um, illegally and get low-paid, uh, informal work. Um, so, resources and population, both very much linked. Um, there are more people in the world, but there are the same amount of resources. So, we are going to mean uh, that in the future there will be food shortages, there will be water shortages, fuel shortages, there will be more migration from places in the world that have a lot to places in, uh, from places in the world sorry, that have very little to places in the world that have a lot. It's going to be more conflict, more war. There are two ways of looking at how population and resources are linked. Firstly, Thomas Malthus, uh, he said that food will run out, loads of people will die, we will reach a point of crisis. Whereas Esther Bosrup um, said that uh, technology and human ingenuity will always find a way to overcome the problems of increased population and not enough resources. Oil is the key example of um, a resource that we use. It's very important because we use it for so many things. Uh, most of it's consumed in Europe, North America, Asia Pacific, countries like Australia for instance. Most of it's produced in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia, Dubai, places like that, North Africa and Russia and the USA. Um, different types of resources, renewable and non-renewable. Non-renewable are basically the fossil fuels, oil, gas and coal, they can't be replaced. Lots of different types of renewable energy, solar power, 
uh, says they're ever run out, I should say never run out, wind power as well. But there's also sustainable resources, sustainable that we do take from nature, like we do with non-renewable resources, but they can be regrown. So biogas in India is an excellent example where uh, dead plants, uh, dead animal waste, things like that are used, they're sort of composted, put in a big pile and the methane and the gases that uh, produce from that get used to generate electricity. So it's not renewable in the sense that they will never run out but it's sustainable in the sense that we have to keep growing it and producing these things so as to make it oil, coal and gas, remember, we can't make that, we can't plant that, that is not sustainable, once we take that, it's gone. So sustainability and the sustainable use of um, resources, we can recycle uh, things like new car technology, so hybrid cars, electric cars, use of renewable energy, being aware of what our ecological footprints are. Our lifestyle can change as well, the way we travel, the food we eat, the way we heat our homes. We have to think about all these things uh, to try and make a change. Uh, technology, as Bozrup said, offers, uh, often advances in food production. Uh, genetically modified foods, for instance, are an example of how technology has increased the amount of food we have. But some people agree, some people disagree with um, genetic modification. So that's your overview uh, of the population and resources unit. If you need to catch up uh, or add any detail to your mind maps from this, do so. But watch this in conjunction with the specific lessons in the population unit that are also on this channel.